dimensional prophecy from the first to the fourth. Now, we're going to go along here in different things here, and you listen real close. Uh, did you know the Bible is still an up-to-date book? Uh, and it's to this very day revealing the significance of future events, blending with the gift of prophecy. The Lord can reach on out and pinpoint the seasonal times and so forth like that, should he care to do. But it is up to date, right in the day that we live in. Listen just real close now. We'll do parts from this script, and I won't do it all because you couldn't get it in three or four telecasts preaching off of it, but we'll do a little bit. And the rest you can read after the service. And if you're new, you can also get some events and so forth at the book stand. So listen to it real close. The future alignment. The 80s have been peerless. Uh, chaotic, uh, and will step up momentum uh, in 1986 to, to 90s or 1970, uh, 80, uh, 87 to 90, here I've got. Now listen to this real close. Later I'll be going into more detail. Now later changes in leadership will bring a complete new vision to the United States government. Dramatic and powerful social and economic changes are coming. Uh, now remember before we preached in the 70s what changes were coming and how they would take place and what they would be, they took place, exactly as the Lord said. But beyond this, in the 90s, uh, it will be worldwide, not only in those conditions, but it will be structural changes, new dimensions in every way that people think, do, work, pleasure, entertainment, or whatever they're doing will change. Uh, a fantasy world, an atmosphere of make-believe will enter the picture, leading to false worship later. Add this to an alcohol, a drug-related society, and you have the making of a delusion of doom. How many of you believe that? Add all that to a drug-related alcohol society, you have the making of a delusion of doom uh, that's coming on the world. Listen to this. You know, I'm going to bring this in. I told you Wednesday night I'd talk a little bit about it. After this wrote in probably six weeks or two months or a month ago or something like that, I write way ahead before I release it. And uh, just before I came to do this on the telecast, I happened to be watching a, a program uh, on a station that had to do with science, like uh, medicine it was. I just turned it on. It just appeared on there. And that was science mostly in chemicals. And they found out in California, and you young people listen to this, and the parents you listen to for the friends that you have, or if you don't have any children for friends, and they found out in California the most uh, bizarre events and strange and mysterious they've ever seen in the history of drugs or any type of disease. They have never seen anything like it, and it's the Lord's way to wake people up. And uh, they begin to come into the hospital, one here and one there. And the, the doctor said, uh, it looks like several of the diseases that uh, we know about, but nothing like this. And when they carried uh, the addict in, they were in a condition, and you'll see the pictures, they were in a condition like this. And they were frozen in all kinds of conditions. Their motor nerves had completely stopped. And they were transfixed. Some could only blink their eyes. Finally, a few could write. And the doctors were so puzzled and mystified. They said, what in the world is this? Finally, one of them, see, there was no way out. They'd be like that. They looked like they were frozen in a dimension of time, like trapped there. So the doctor finally got one to scratch a little bit, and he began to tell them that he could see them and he could hear them, but he couldn't move. And he put down there, he was a heroin addict. And all the rest that began to come in here and there were from a heroin addict. Now, listen to this. They found out what had begun to happen, the chemist did, that the underground uh, type of chemical and, and uh, druggist were making synthetic drugs that were like heroin and uh, like cocaine and, and different kinds of drugs and marijuana and so forth. And some of it was 100 times more potent than heroin. And what it was is these here new designer drugs, they call them. And they were passing them out and selling them on the streets, and this particular brand was utter terror. They were transfixed like they were caught in a time space. And you'll see it on the screen. Some would just begin to do this later on. Others were just transfixed. They did find out by what they had to treat other diseases. They tried it on them, and it worked. They were able to set off those motor nerves in the brain, and they gradually began to function again. What horror that struck the streets in California, and they began to make news broadcasts and everything the doctors did and so forth like that, warning them to stay away from the street drugs because synthetic drugs were being made underground and being sold. Uh, finally, one case way before that, a mysterious case that they found out, a uh, young man back from uh, Vietnam began to make his own type drugs, and he was the first one 
I guess, that made something that didn't work, and he took it, and they found him in the bottom of the basement, his family did, and he was just transfixed like that. Finally, they carried him, and they got him, uh, they got him loosened from this fantasy of this type of world that he was in. Listen, teenagers, you don't know what's going to be out on those streets later on. And for the general public, uh, it was on a NOVA program, they call it, and the general public, uh, beware of what they're doing. And now they're making marijuana five times more potent than they did before in order to hook them so they can go on to heroin and so forth like that. So this fellow, they finally got him out of it, and he was able to tell them the compounds that he mixed together and, and, and that did this. And then later on, after they released him, he had some mental problem too, kind of like, and later on, uh, deep depression area of type of major of some problem, later on he mixed up some other things to find out how, what he was doing to help others, I would imagine. And they found him later on in front of the hospital. He had walked back, and they found him under a tree, and he was dead. So they, they made an autopsy. His folks gave an autopsy. Well, this one here died. He went into the fourth dimension. Uh, you can't see him, but God's got contact with him. How many of you are still with me? See, that's leaving time and space. That belongs to God. He's gone now. Uh, and, and besides that, uh, when we get into these subjects, we're going to go back and forth. Now, so add all of these things that we're speaking back to a drug-related society, and you have the making of a delusion of doom. Look at all the robberies, the crimes on the streets. I get letters for prayer all over the nation, praying for people, their children, praying for their relatives and so forth like that. All of them, different crimes that are on the streets and what we're seeing in our great large cities right behind that is the drugs and the alcohol that we have today. Beware. Stay with the Lord Jesus, young people. He will bless you. He will keep you and you will not have to suffer through the terrors of the drugs and alcohol. Can you say amen? Give the Lord a hand clap for the people that are watching this. Uh, now remember, We'll try to get those scenes and show you some of those scenes, and it'll really be dramatic and dynamic when you begin to see what is taking place. Uh, now, we'll go back to this right here. The other one, he passed on. Nothing you can do for him now. He's in God's hands. Now, people's, people's reason they're warning is to keep others from going into that and dying and so forth, even worse than being frozen. They call it the frozen attic. That was the name of it. Now, people's minds will totally change and will be caught up into a euphorium of global thinking. Now, this is yet a little ways down the highway, but it's already taking place in many nations. A massive deception, an electronic global family enslaved by a master of subtlety, a world leader, will come. It seems we are crossing a bridge of time. We are in God's great time measures. We're crossing another one, a very important one. This is the time zone we're crossing of the latter rain soon that you must prepare your heart because the door of the ark will shut. How many of you are still with me now? They crossed a certain time zone and he interrupted. God said he would no longer strive with man, and the great flood came, and he said, like in the days of Noah, at the end of the age shall it be again. Uh, and the same of Sodom and Gomorrah, at the end of the age shall it be again. And Jesus forewarned them, like a bridge of time, a tunnel into the future. The handwriting is on the wall. We see signs on every hand telling everybody this. I foresee an atomic sword hanging over every nation like a black cloud, a harbinger of doom. Frightened mankind will hover together like the beast of the field. Evidently, this last statement has to do with the threat of destruction upon the world, and is partly and actually what causes them to come under one world system grasping for world peace. That's only one part of it there. And peace will finally come for a while, Antichrist seven-year peace covenant, but it will only delay the final Holocaust momentarily. In the vision of prophecy, Armageddon still looms in a fiery halo of disaster over the Middle East and will spread worldwide. It's exactly right. Now, many of you know that, but if you're new here this morning, those are events uh, not only seen by visionary majors, the Bible, and symbolism, and also in direct fire and prophecy, also reveals at the end of the age it'll head up into that after the world thinks it has peace. It will not work. It will take place. And you know, one of the strangest things that I was going to bring out about a while ago, because we're going to break and go into something else, was that a month or so ago that I preached leading to a delusion of dooms, an alcohol-drug-related society. And those very words that were written like that just the day before that I came over here to do this television message, uh, God showed the delusion of doom on those people. That was him. How many of you believe that? See how he works? It wasn't there, but it was written. And then later he revealed it as it is today. So that's the kind of a world we're living in. Now, we'll continue in a moment on this right here. Now, you know, talking about the flood, God gave the flood in its weather patterns. We're in world events. One of the greatest signs that those people saw when they saw that great ship, that water was coming. All right. They had never seen water come up out of the ground and mist, the Bible says. 
And one of the things was the erratic weather pattern to them, unusual, something strange, thunder and lightning came, and it rained from heaven. Now, the weather was involved. He said, like in the days of Noah, so shall it be again. And the weather pattern changes, and they used a great ship that they laughed about, made fun of Noah and so forth like that, but God sh closed the, the door, and only a few got in. At the same thing, he warned again at the end of the age, uh, and also Sodom and Gomorrah, firestone and brimstone falling out of heaven upon them will happen again in the atomic era of Armageddon. See, he's, he's reeling back and forth in these events here. We find out the society. Listen to this closely. I want to get all of this in here. You know, by satellite now, they're able to see things they've never seen before. And by satellite, according to the weather, they see, and I've got to see them, and we'll try to get some of them. They see huge whirlpools deep deep in the sea, not on top. There's a few of them whirlpools that you see a little bit on the top where currents come together. But these giant, great whirlpools are deep in the ocean, slowly moving around. They're as large as a giant tornado that you would see up on the ground or a great hurricane that spins. And they're underneath the sea, gradually turning, slowly as they turn. And they're watching them by satellite. And by three dimension, they were able to look in show how deep they were, how wide they were, and how they were turning gradually. Now, what are they doing under there? In different coastlines, they see them turning there. Well, let us go to a scripture, and then we'll come back a little bit more to the weather. Here's what it says here. In Jeremiah 25 and 32, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ah, Behold, evil shall go from nation to nation. Now, this has to do with idolatry and radiation, too. An evil shall go from nation to nation. And a great whirlwind. Now, he's not talking about ordinary whirlwind. A great whirlwind shall be raised up. Now, he's going to raise it up. It's down in there. Shall be raised up from the coast of the, from the coast of the earth. Now, raised up where? From out of the water on the coastline. What causes those great whirling pools uh, to come into the coastline to be raised up? We know, according to more of the whirlwinds of fire that's coming, a great atomic great concussions could cause them to move in. And they'll lift up uh, out of the water and go across the whole earth, ah, the Bible said. And when it does, multitudes and multitudes will be slain, the Bible says, of the Lord as he speaks about it. This is judgment at the time of the end of time. And they're seeing these strange phenomena. And I'm seeing another thing they saw, huge fire rifts extending hundreds of miles, rifts in the sea fire coming out of it, spreading the continents back, pulling back, and some of the great huge changes, uh, structural changes is moving back that it's going to change. Uh, what is it getting ready for? They see it happening, and we'll show pictures of it so that you know that there's, they've seen it. Great black clouds of smoke under the sea. so hot in some places under there, you can't stay. They're filming it as close as they can get to it. Just fiery, just as much fire as you've ever seen coming up. It's leading to catastrophic uh, earthquakes that will come in the sea and volcanic eruptions that were predicted 14 years ago on the scrolls. Huge islands would appear out of the sea. Those are beginning to happen uh, the last two and a three, half, uh, three and a half years or four that they have seen in the sea. They've never seen anything. Great islands are coming up. Volcanic eruptions that were predicted are happening everywhere. And I said in the southern states, I believe 14 years ago, they would have huge sinkholes and now some of those sinkholes has reached out as a block across and a half a block or more deep and swallowing up houses. They're just sinking because of the water level and so forth like that. And all I guess they've taken out of the sea in different places. But it's happening exactly as the Bible. With these great continental shelves are changing. And also the San Andreas Fault as it runs down will be tremendous and dramatic, powerful earthquakes will take place. And the loss of property uh, will be great, the killer quakes that will come. I said three great quiller quakes will come in the 80s. One took place in Mexico. I wrote it before that. In fact, I told the person that was there where that one would take place and said I felt, felt where the others would take place. It took place in a great earthquake. So the earth is changing in every direction. Now, great whirlwinds, these pools that are out in the sea. Let's move along. Isaiah 24, 1, 19 and 21 says the earth will roll back and forth by. Shows us the axes will be out of their places. Revelation 6 and 12 and 15 uh, reveals this also. According to the scriptures, huge asteroids of burning mountains will fall into the sea as it whistles across. It will land in the sea as our earth is turning and it comes in. One-third of all shipping lines will be direct, 
will be destroyed just from one of them, tidal waves. I feel, in my opinion, in the 90s, they're going to see something pull out. And probably before that, smaller ones will fall or could fall. But it will take place. So asteroids could move those whirlwinds in, concussions in the sea, tidal waves everywhere. Now, you know, when we used to preach about the weather that was coming like we see it today, people said, oh, well, we'll have good weather. See, it hasn't been that way. It's been exactly as the Holy Spirit has predicted to his people in the days of Noah, the weather patterns changed, destroyed the earth. Uh, at the end of the age, Jesus said the same thing. So listen real close there. So we see that. And then Jesus forewarned about the pollutions. He called it pol pestilence shall be therein before I come. What have we seen pestilence? The pollution in our cities, the water streams, the poison, radiation, atomic power, all of that is pestilence. See, pestilence means anything that is poisonous to kill and so forth. Even poison in the tablets, in the stores, and everything, that's pestilence. And Jesus prophesied at the end of the age that it would be here. So we're moving into that. And let's get along with this right here. Now, those are the weather conditions. And as you see some of those on the screen, we're taking a little time because you'll begin to see what's happening in the oceans. And somebody says, why is all that happening? Well, it will cause great uh, type of destruction, but yet it is turning for the millennium. God is writing this earth back. Every island and mountain will be laid out bare. The Bible said for the millennium that will come upon this earth uh, is changing, and then it, everything will be so beautiful, but not until the Prince of Peace comes. How many of you believe that? So he's getting ready, changing these axes, moving underneath. for It's a threefold purpose, and it's moving for, for his glory. The future continuing. According to prophecy, we will have a new economy, a new social and political system, a new religion that blends all cults and false religions together, a definite thrust towards a new world order is being planned right now in various nations. And within a very short period of time, this will pave the way for a world a dictator. You know, just the other day, and we have predictions running the 80s and 90s, just the other day on the news, some well-known economists claimed the 1990s will usher in a global collapse involving most uh, phases of the governments. But we do, besides all that, and before that, things will take place too, but in a minor way, not to quite as major as that. We know there will be a worldwide food shortage and a depression later in the age and is one reason why mankind unites in the wrong system taking the mark. Revelations 6, 5, and 8. Revelation 11, 6 give you a little insight on what we're talking about there. Inflation is creeping now. And once out of hand again, coupled with the debt, which is trillions. Now watch, it's creeping along now. But once out of hand again with a debt that's owed, trillions owed by the USA government, is evidently what causes this nation to do things in the future it would never have thought of doing before and becoming partners with the dragon himself. You couldn't state it any better from the Holy Spirit. How many of you are with me? Oh, we'll go along. God loves this nation like he did Israel. But the nation is getting more religious than it is spiritual. How many of you ever noticed that? Finally, the spiritual ones will be put on one side for him, and the religious nature will go on the other side and form into the mark of the beast, which is a religious system which is utterly false and is utterly destroyed. At Armageddon. How do you like that? Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> exactly right. He said, I'll separate my people at the end of the age. And those I call, they will come. He knows every one of you by name. He knows everybody in this world by name and those that hadn't come here yet and so forth. He is the infinite. He's a great God. Well, I must hurry along here. And we get all this. You get uh, only just little parts of this scroll is being put in here. You'll read a whole new uh, spectrum of events and so forth when you get out of there. And you just watch them. They'll come to pass. And you watch the, the Bible prophecy, the power of the Holy Spirit behind it, and the anointing that will go with you. It's no day to try to erase the Bible and say these things ain't, they're not going to occur. They've always occurred. And the Bible said, uh, don't leave it alone. Don't touch it. Leave it like that. And coupled with what God reveals in a prophetic gift, he brings it together. He reveals it to his people. He shows them how to unite, what time it is, and, and when to do all these things. Listen to this. So we find out uh, in this. Now, the dimensional future the dimensional future. As we spoke of before concerning the political and religious economic systems will be tied to supercomputers that will mastermind the world economy. Controlling. It will. It will command the people who buy, work, and sell. Did you know that now the stock markets run all by computers and it gives the buying and selling signals? That the small investor in there without it tied to those computers is wiped out. It also causes them to, that they can go to tremendous heights and fall like lightning, and a little investor can be wiped out, and the big massive corporations can hang on. But the world depression comes to wipe them out. But at the end of the age also, I haven't got time to go into detail. This is just a little bit in the business. So the Bible gives it, though, in Revelation 13, different chapters. The Bible does go into it, the economy. Uh, at, at, but uh, uh, at, the, at the end of the age, there will rise a commercial market in Revelation 18 that seemingly everybody that gets in there seems to get rich. But there's a payday to that. How many of you know? It doesn't last very long, and when it does, 
It is destroyed in one hour, death and destruction from atomic. How many of you believe that? Exactly right. I haven't got time to go into that. And so we find out the, the dimensional future. Listen to this real close here as we go into this. We will have a three-dimensional world. Now listen real close. Now, men of science are working on these things. Now you say a three-dimensional world. We went to the first dimension, then Ennis returned to Edison's light. We come on up in there and expanded a little bit more, and we got into what we call the electronics and so forth like that. Then the atomic, we were swept into the atomic age in that dimension. They almost come out of the fourth dimension, and an atom you can't see, and it'll destroy anything. And man is now in the third dimension of laser, computers, and so forth like that. And the Bible touches on these different various things somewhat. So man entering into the third dimension now. I'm going to bring this out uh, for a point. Listen to this real close. In these dimensions we see now, like from satellite, the weather's three dimension to them, and so forth like that. In space, living in space, back and forth, is a three-dimensional era. They can look up there, back and forth, with the television cameras there, and the three-dimensional world. And then when I, you remember, let me bring this in, the kids will understand this. You remember the man that made Star Wars? How many of you remember that? Lucas. All right. Made Star Wars. He was trying to develop something to show a three-dimensional ships going in space and so forth like that. And he come up with a tool that the medical doctors got. And the medical doctors can take this thing that Lucas, and he sells it to them now, and they can take that, and they, it's quite expensive. And they can take by three dimensions, and they can look on the back side of the heart, on the side of the heart, in the front of the heart, and inside the heart, and everywhere. Three dimension in there in medicine. So we're going in a three-dimensional world. Now look, we'll have a three-dimensional revival. Ooh. You say, how do you get in these three dimensions? Well,